Today we are speaking with the diversely talented Erica M, author, actor, speaker, broadcaster, journalist, playwright, and award-winning songwriter. Erica is best known as a pioneering VJ for the revolutionary music era of much music. Erica has now built an empire in the world of marketing to moms through her agency M & Co and her award-winning Yummy Mummy Club, which provides laser-sharp content to moms everywhere. So welcome, Erica, and welcome to Cup of Joe. Thanks, Michael. You and I go way back, so I'll enter the way back machine for a second. What it's like to be the voice of a generation in the 80s on much music? I actually had no idea. And I would walk down the street, and for some reason, the people started to stop me in the street and say, oh my god, I, you know, I used to love you. I'd say, used to? Uh, oh my god, my husband had such a crush. Tell him I'm still hot. But I didn't realize that the memories and the connection was so strong with people. It's been great for my career because I think back then I earned a lot of trust because I was authentic before it was okay to be authentic. And I think that at much is what really resonated with people. Moses picked people who were the real thing. Right, so culturally, and, and I know Moses was great at this, like going, you, 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 and then putting together this community. But when I say culturally, you know, it's really important in business today, when you look at brands and marketing, to find the right talent that supports and stands for what you do. Mm -hmm. how, how important was that with a collective like, you know, city and much at the time? What Moses did is he built a community um, specifically a music community, pop culture community, and then City TV. It was the Toronto, was a community. And today, what brands want and really need is a real connection. And you can't fake connection. You can't True. buy connection. It has to be real. Let's talk a bit about your pivot to the world of your agency, M & Co, the Yummy Mummy Club. How did the pivot start? Like, how did you get there? I would like to say that I was a genius, but really, I was a shitty mother, or I felt like it. And I do a lot of talks, and I was at a talk, and I was telling people that it was challenging for me as a former TV host, that because I had a child, and that I was a little older, and perhaps not as beautiful as people remembered me, that people weren't that interested in what I had to say. And I said, you know, I'm, I built up quite a, an ability to be on camera. And I said, I miss it. And someone in the audience said, I'm a TV producer. And I said, like, you're 12. So I went and, and she said, no, really, I'm a TV producer. So I went up to her after and I said, okay, well, what do you got? And she gave me her business card, which in fact was scrunched up and had someone else's phone number written on it. And I pitched her an idea called Yummy Mummy. The concept being that everyone is worried about the kids. So there's all these parenting shows, mm -hmm. how to take care of your children. But what about the caregiver? What about mothers? For people like me, type A, I didn't hold a lot of babies. I never raised a child before. I had no idea what to expect. And I wanted someone to help me survive the roller coaster of motherhood. So this was 13 years ago, where at that time, I think, people were still perpetuating this myth that motherhood was completely natural and that you adapt to motherhood automatically. And most of us were drowning and all of us feeling badly about ourselves. So the TV show went really well. Um, I did it for a couple of seasons. And when the show ended, I was not done. Really, that's all it was. I needed to find community. And my mom was saying, why don't you start a little website? It wasn't a business. I just wanted to connect with other moms. So fast forward to today mm -hmm. from that little idea, mm -hmm. and what does it look like? Well, the fact that people know Yummy Mummy Club to me is the greatest accomplishment of mm -hmm. my life. And I built it into an, a, a wonderful, important community for Moms by Moms. I find that in the world of advertising and in life as well, moms get a bad rap. People look at moms as almost invisible. So they're not taking into consideration that these women are highly educated, 
who are taking care of a family. And kind of humans too. And full humans. <laughs> So I think that that was a big miss for a lot of brands and I think that they're starting just now. So that's 13 years after I sort of got into the mom business. So who's doing it right? What brands out there mm. are speaking to moms the right way? I think the first thing to note is that the brands who are getting it aren't just speaking to moms, they're speaking to parents, so moms and dads. So for example, Cheerios um, had a really cool uh, activation called the Cheerios Challenge. They had this really silly thing where they asked dads to build towers of Cheerios on their sleeping kids. And it went obviously viral. So cute, all these beautiful sleeping faces with towers of Cheerios on them. Love that. That was so great because what they're saying is dads like to play and be silly and have fun but there's nothing more beautiful than a sleeping kid and dads we want to talk to you. So that was great. There's a new ad from Tylenol with a man who's getting ready in the morning. Uh, someone knocks on the door and a woman is standing with her child and she says can you take him I have to get to work. Obviously they're divorced or separated and you see new type of family, new type of relationship where the dad happily takes a son, mom walks, runs off to work, kid's happy. That's a new family. Mm. How important is kid fluence in the world of mm -hmm. marketing, and I won't go to moms, to parents mm -hmm. today? Mm -hmm. um, there's no denying that kids can push their parents to buy crap, no doubt about it. Um, but I think that as a marketer, you also have to sort of attack both demographics because really in the end it's the mom who has the control. You sit on the Mattel Global Advisory Board for the evolution of Barbie. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a massive amount of gravitas because you cannot screw up Barbie. Well, what, that, is, what does that look like? Uh, Mattel was freaking out because the market share for Barbie is plummeting. Their, the values that Barbie represents are not actually in keeping with mom's want for girls now, so they had to change. What they did, I think, was somewhat revolutionary. They completely changed the shape of Barbie. Now think about that in terms of cost. They've had one standard cost for 50 mm -hmm. years. They now had to build how many different models. Suddenly, all the clothes don't fit. That was a, a huge thing to take on, but I don't know if it's too little too late. What do you think the one thing brands can do to change the way they engage with people? Mm. Well, you just said the word, engage. Marketing today is relationship marketing. So if you're on their Facebook page, are, you, are they just you know, showing you the latest crap about them or are they asking you questions? Are they giving you opportunities to be a part of their community in a meaningful way? Excellent. Well, it's been a wonderful conversation. Great to catch up. Thank you. Go back eras and thank you Not very much. Not that long. No, no, no. We're young. <laughs> Seems just like yesterday. <laughs> so thank you. You're welcome.